Wow. Mike Budenholzer. Mike looks like he needs a hug. You guys ready in the back? Is there any more guys coming? Just like to start by uh, congratulating Nick Nurse and his staff uh, and the Toronto Raptors and all their players, their organization. Um, Congratulations to them. They did a heck of a job. Uh, you know, it's hard to put into words, um, you know, how you feel uh, when a season like this ends. I'll save most of it for the team, but I will uh, I'll say I couldn't be more proud of the way our guys compete, the way they play every night, the way they conduct themselves. Um, this hurts, uh, but uh, what they did in this playoffs uh, tonight against a really good Toronto Raptor team and to get to the conference finals in uh, the regular season, special season for us. And we, you know, we feel like we're just getting started. This is the beginning of our journey. And again, I couldn't be more proud of our team. And I would, I, I don't know that there'll be an opportunity in questions. Um, I would like to thank John Horst and the front office and the job that they did um, in this setting, in this environment, uh, the roster and uh, everything they did to put together a team that could compete at this level. Um, I couldn't be more thankful and grateful and appreciative of what John Horst, the front office, does, what the ownership does. Um, so I just wanted to say that here in this setting. Matt Velasquez, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. You guys were up 15 late in the third. They go on that 26-3 run. Just what did you sense from your guys during that stretch? Did you sense them tensing up? or what, How would you maybe diagnose the struggles in the half court, too? Uh, I'm not sure I'll go back and watch this game, at least not for a while. Uh, a little bit of both. You know, I felt like we got out in transition. You know, I, I remember one big play, you know, Giannis, Giannis gets it on a, almost a lob and is at the rim and kicks it out and we miss a wide open three. And my guess is there's going to be some situations where we missed open shots and there's going to be some dry possessions where we either don't execute well enough, um, we don't maybe... Uh, share and pass the ball and play in a crowd. Um, you know, you just, you know, 26 to 3 runs, usually a little bit of everything. Eric, name the athletic. I'm curious, taking a look at the start of that fourth quarter, Giannis is on the bench. When you look back, do you regret maybe not having Giannis out there when, as they go on that run that ties it up real quick? No, I mean, I. I you know, it's been a big topic, something, you know, lots of questions. I don't, I don't think Giannis playing 44 minutes is the solution. If we can't win with Giannis at, you know, 40, 40 and a half, uh, then Toronto deserves it. You know, at some point he's got to take a break. I think he took a one-minute break in the third quarter, and he took a minute and a half or two minutes. And, you know, um, credit to Toronto, and uh, it's an area where we got to be better. Um, you know, Giannis was out there for a lot of uh, – a lot of good things and, um, you know, part of whatever it is that didn't go our way. Uh, Kane Pittman with the pick and roll, bud. With 29 seconds left, it's a three-point game. There's a bit of a differential there with the shot clock. Is, was that an obvious decision for you to, to let them run the clock out and try and stop, or what's the thought process when you get there? No, oh, gosh, it's right, right, like on that edge. And, uh, you know, we talked a lot about it as a coaching staff and, you know, went into the huddle with the players. And, you know, I think it was – 29.4, 29.6. So, you know, you feel like there's a five and a half, six second differential. And um, as good as we've been defensively all year to, you know, try and get a stop, you got five seconds, six seconds uh, to come and score, you know, a three point and tie it up. You know, the debate to uh, do you have more possessions and, and play the free throw game? Um, like I said, it's just right on the edge 29.6, 5.4 different, 5.6 difference. We went with trying to get a stop. Eric named the athletic. Um, taking a look, you, you just mentioned a sequence where Giannis has it underneath, kicks it out. You, you look at 21 points from him at the end of the night. I, is there some push from you to try to be more aggressive, try to take it to the rack more? Or I guess just kind of how would you view him in these final four games? I thought he was fabulous. You know, I, 
there was, you know, maybe uh, I think the one game, game three, um, you know, when you look at the film and you have conversations with Giannis, that was uh, maybe the only game where, you know, I think the aggressiveness and the force that he needs to play with, uh, there was, you know, enough situations where we felt like he could have been more aggressive, more, more forceful. Uh, but, um, you know, five out of six games, I would say, and, and even that one, he was very good. I'm just being critical of Giannis and trying to push him. Uh, he's doing a very, very close to exactly what we need and what we want him to do. You know, just late, Matt Velasquez, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, just late in that third quarter with what Kawhi was doing, and then he continued for the rest of the game. Just, just how hard is it to try and slow him down and, and stop him, and, and how much is that has been like a story of this, this whole series for you guys? Well, I mean, you know, he finishes with 27, and I'm not sure how many of them were at the end on a couple of those free throw situations. So... Um, He's a great player. He made some uh, very, very special plays. Uh, give him a ton of credit. But uh, to your question, I mean, I, I thought the defense overall on him was uh, to be commended. Eric, name the athletic. I think the obvious reaction to this will be, you know, this is a stepping stone for Giannis, that this is, you know, as a great player, you know, you have to go through some losses. But... It feels like also this team you guys put together, you just had so many moves that came together. That might also be, you know, who knows, your best chance. Just how do you kind of try to process this in the moment and then also take Giannis through it? Yeah, there's no doubt that, uh, you know, what John Horst in the front office was able to do with bringing in George Hill and Nico Meritich and uh, obviously Brooke in the summer, that uh, the roster that was put together for this season uh, as the season started going, you started feeling like it was special and could do special things, including advancing past tonight. Um, but it didn't happen. And uh, not for lack of effort from our players, not for lack of effort from the front office or ownership. Um, some, sometimes it just doesn't work. It doesn't happen. The other team makes more plays. Uh, but I will say uh, Giannis is going to get better. <laughs> like to, to think for us and to be excited about his future at 24 and yeah, I mean, it's it's just the easy narrative, easy easy um, narrative story that this is part of Giannis's stepping. But I think the thing that makes Giannis unique and exciting is, in our minds, we feel like he's going to get a lot better. He's at 24. Some guys are, you know, I don't want to say uh, they are who they are, and some of the great ones at 24 were just, and then they were the same at 30 and 32, and so on and so forth. Giannis, we feel like, has got a lot of room to grow, and I think that's probably um, our entire roster we feel excited about can grow. Uh, just the, the rebounding numbers, they're all in, in your favor, really, when you look at them, but it felt like, again, they just were able to get offensive rebounds in, in key points, and it was Kawhi tonight, I guess. You spoke about it after Game 5, but did you think that uh, that was more him making big plays, or, or what did you see from your guys on, that, on, the, on the glass? I mean... Uh, certainly credit to Kawhi, certainly, you know, uh, Ibaka, Gasol, um, Siakam sometimes. Again, it wasn't the number of rebounds, uh, like you said. It was uh, just the timeliness of them. You know, the loose ball foul between Giannis and Ibaka, I, I don't know. It seems like that stuff happens every possession, both teams, and it ends up in a Van Fleet three, um, you know. So I don't know if that goes down as a team offensive rebound or whatever. But those just there's a few plays where we're coming into the game. We said we had to be better, um, and we just didn't get it done. Eric, last one for Bud. Uh, Eric, name the athletic. Can you just talk about Chris in this series? I know obviously he has that 30 point game, and then some in the teens. He has Kawhi for large parts of it. Just what did you think of his performance in this series? Yeah, I mean, the thing that stands out to me is defensively the way he took the challenge and embraced, uh, you know, guarding um, Kawhi Leonard in this series. Like, it's if anybody has any doubt of what kind of defender um, and how good he is on that end of the floor, um, hopefully they realized. And doesn't mean that Kawhi didn't score, you know, significant number of points, but I feel like he had to work and made everything very difficult. Malcolm the same. Um, and then offensively, you know, I think there were, like you said, there's a 30-point game, there's a 10-assist game, there's a 10-rebound game. Um, at the end of the day, like to me, when I think about Chris in this series, he was just doing anything he could to help us win. Um, and sometimes they put a lot of attention on him, and 
other guys, uh, you know, got to kind of thrive and, and, and work if he's got that much attention. So um, overall, I couldn't be more proud and more pleased with, you know, the way Chris conducted himself, played, competed. He laid it all on the line. Thank you, bud. Thanks.